Hey, good morning. It's Tuesday, March 2nd. Thanks so much for being here this morning. Before I leave this theme of the uh, curtain being torn in two and the promise of Christ and what that meant, meant for us, I want to just spend one more time talking about this precious act of mercy and grace that Jesus gave to us. And it's in the last verse of Hebrews 4, end of the chapter that we looked at last night. I looked on verse 15 last night about Jesus is able to sympathize with you in your weakness and sin because he endured the same weakness, the same suffering, the same hurt that you experienced, yet he was without sin. And that's what gives us hope. But then notice verse 16. Because of the curtain being torn in two, because of the hope we have in Christ, because of what Christ has done for us, then the writer of Hebrews says this, let us then approach the throne of grace with confidence, not out of fear. Remember, fear comes from a sense of punishment. Fear comes from a sense of having to attain. Fear comes from playing on our weaknesses. The torn curtain means that's all gone away. So I come before the holiness of God, the holy of holies, the most special place. I can now approach his throne, which before the birth of Christ, anyone even daring to think about that, they were toast. But now we can come before him. We can approach the throne with confidence. And what happens when we go there? We approach with confidence because we may receive grace and find mercy to help us in our time of need. See, this is what Jesus accomplished for us by ripping that curtain, by the sacrifice that it took, by the pain that he endured, by the separation from his father, by becoming guilty, okay? Guilty of my sin and your sin. Not in some symbolic sense, but he who knew no sin, knew no sin, became sin for us. He did this so that we could reach out to him and he could help us in our time of need. That's the promise of Christ. We receive mercy and find grace. That only happens before the throne of God. See, I can't obey my way into that. I can't attain to that. That's why Jesus, uh, Jesus, why David says in Psalm 51, if you desired sacrifice, I would bring it, but there isn't any. The sacrifices of God are a broken heart and a heart that is contrite and knows that God has mercy on me. See, true obedience flows from brokenness, not from performance, not from getting it right. Obedience flows from brokenness because I know I am forgiven. I know I can find peace. Nothing can take me away from it, even by stinking performance. Look, on my best day, when I'm trying to do everything right, okay, it still stinks. It really does. I don't want to stand before God on the basis of my best day. I want to stand before God on the basis of what Jesus has accomplished for me. But he ripped that curtain open. I can come before his throne. I can receive mercy. I can find grace. I can stand there in confidence because of what Jesus has done. Obedience comes from that. Obedience that pleases God comes from that. I can't honor God and make God happy with me by my obedience. Only Jesus could do that. There's just one more component here. If I can't make God be right with me by my obedience, if a broken and contrite heart are the sacrifices he desires, if in the midst of all my mess I can come before this throne of grace, this a believably beautiful throne of grace and be confident that God will hear me, then why do I require obedience of others to satisfy me? Now I'm speaking in the first person here. I know it applies to you too, but 
But I have to ask myself that question. Why do I require obedience of others? Why do I require them to do things that are going to make me satisfied? Why do I want them to assure me that I'm wonderful before I can extend mercy to them? Rather, if I want to be this conduit of mercy and grace, that I understand the curtain is ripped apart, that Jesus paid the penalty and sacrifice of my sins, he endured my suffering, he knows exactly what it's about. so that I can find mercy and grace, not because I've earned it, but because Jesus has earned it for me. Then let's not require that of others. I don't need to require that of other people. And brothers and sisters, neither do you. Yes, we're vulnerable before God, but if we do what God wants us to do, if we extend mercy and grace wisely, as God directs me to, then that's how I show mercy and grace to others without requiring they do something back to me to make me happy. See, that turns it all upside down. But let's just stay with this beautiful theme, the grace of God. We can confidently come before God and receive mercy and find grace. That's Jesus' promise. Let's dwell on that, rejoice in that, and let the people that we love bask in the mercy given to us. Yeah, love your thoughts, love your feedback. And Lord willing, uh, we'll see you tonight. You have a great day living in the mercy and grace that Jesus has given to you. Have a great day. Bye-bye.